And what it comes down to when you're talking about Deshaun Jackson is simply this. It comes across as a bit spiteful. Now, what's the ideal scenario in terms of how you handle this? I've got Jason. I've got, I'm sorry, not Jason Vaughn because he's gone. I've got Jeremy Macklin returning from injury. I've got Brent Selleck. I've got LaShawn McCoy, one of the best, if not the best, running back in the game, depending on who you talk to. You look at Darren Sproles, who you just acquired from the New Orleans Saints. You've got these multitude Do of weapons. not forget Riley Cooper. And Riley Cooper. Let's Please. not forget him. So you got Riley Cooper as well. OK, you've got all of these requisite weapons. You couldn't just let Deshaun Jackson go and say, look, we know he's going to want the ball. We know he's a bit temperamental. He's not going to be happy with us having to be judicious in distributing the football. You know what? It may be time for us to part ways with them, not to mention it's going to shave some money off our cap. You couldn't just do that? No. A story like this comes out, Skip, and it just reeks of spitefulness. It reeks of unprofessionalism. And dare I say, it has absolutely, positively nothing to do with a gold standard that the Philadelphia Eagles organization has prided itself, and I have validated for them on their behalf. I'm incredibly disappointed that this story came out, the timing that it came out with, because to me, you were trying to mess with this man's money. And that is what bothers me. To sit there and to just throw that out, you know how NFL teams are. Sure. They'll ask you about anything. They're inquisitive about anything. They will probe to the umph degree. And something like this, I hope, will not affect Deshaun Jackson's money. I know it's not going to affect him, his ability to get a job, mm -hmm. but it can be used as an excuse to minimize the monetary commitment that you make to him. And that is what rubs me the wrong way about this, Skip. I can't believe they would try to do him in just as a personal vendetta. Right. But if they were trying to keep him from, from teams that, that are on the verge, and we, we just talked in, I told you in the A block, we, we talked about the New England Patriots, the New York Jets, not that the Jets are on the verge, but but any team that might be a threat to the Eagles, maybe within the division, maybe trying to scare them off by, again, to, to your theory, leaking these details to NewJersey.com. That's right. what we're saying, right? Right. Yes. right. Okay, now I don't know that, but if, you, if that's what you're hearing. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, good for you. Now, let's go bigger picture. Back to the question. Sure. So how concerned should these other teams be? I'll just one to ten scale it. Okay. Ten being the worst. I'd give it about a three in concern. You would have to have some concern here because clearly, let's, let's do facts that we know. Deshaun grew up in a pretty iffy neighborhood with some kids who became gang members. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. You, you've talked about your background. Yep. Yeah, you grew up with some kids who, and some older kids who were already bad kids, That's right? right? Okay. So should we hold that against Deshaun? I say no. He did appear to throw up a gang sign in a game on Monday night, the opener last year, sure. remember, right. against the Washington Redskins, and right. he's visiting the Redskins today. Yes. Right. And D'Angelo, the guy he threw it up in the face of, yeah. is the, his biggest Big advocate supporter. to come, come to Redskin country, man. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So did it appear he threw up a gang sign? It did. And on a couple of Instagram pictures with some of his from back from his neighborhood kids, right. it did appear that he threw up sure. a gang sign. Right. Is that fair? Yes, it is. Fair. Okay. What does that mean? How do we interpret that? This is just me. Does he think of himself in his heart of hearts as kind of an honorary, unofficial gang member? He might, because these are the guys he grew up with. Is he actually in the gang? I don't believe it. And I believe his statement, I am not in a gang. That's just me. Has he had questionable associations in Philadelphia? Right. I've heard this for years, that he is running with the wrong crowd. Right. I've talked off camera to Deshaun about this. Mm -hmm. He claims, and again, I'm having to take him at his word, that he has cleaned up his act a lot. Mm -hmm. That he has grown up, and we just talked about, yep. this could be the all-time cover-up, but, right, but, but he book. comes on our show at the Super Bowl yes. with a kid's book called No Bullies in the Huddle. You remember was, was he that gave just us trying to, yeah. to reposition his image a little bit? Yeah. I don't think so. I think that's in Deshaun's heart. And I told Carrie in the A Block today before you got here, I, I've talked to him long enough off camera. Sometimes you sit with somebody and look in their eyes, and then you kind of look down into their heart and soul. Right. I think his heart's in a good place. That's just me. I could be dead wrong about that, but that's just me. Does he have any criminal record at None. all? None. Okay, so am I, am I going to be cognizant of this if I sign him? Well, sure I am. Is he going to be a little difficult? Might he miss and be a little tardy to a meeting? He might. When you look at a guy like Deshaun Jackson, and you are from the hood, and you... Uh, one of the things that I tried to explain to people over the weekend, be careful about the word associated, mm -hmm. okay? Because I was raised in Hollis, Queens, born in the Bronx, raised in Hollis, Queens, New York City. I've told this to you on many occasions. You know where I'm going with this. 
I have the greatest mama on the planet Earth, in mm. my estimation. Yep. And I have an inner circle of friends. There is no doubt about that. Some of the people that I grew up with were in the drug game. If they saw me near it, they would beat me down. If they saw anyone come near me, they would beat me down because their whole mentality was, you don't need to make the decisions we made. We made the mistake. Don't you make it. So when I was a very young, I was a very young teenager, they squashed that. I could see them today, Skip. You'd see me, I'd give them a of pound course. and a hug. They want a picture, they get yeah. a picture. You need tickets to a game, I could hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. Now, we can't hang together. <laughs> you of course. It's not <laughs> like that. You understand what I'm saying? We can't do that. All right, because you living that way and I'm living this way. But I got love for you because in part, if it were not for you, I wouldn't be here yep. because of how you protected and saved me. With that mentality and with that knowledge in mind, understand that you have a plethora of young kids growing up in the streets from the hood where that element serves as a protective vice for them, at least at one point in sure. time in their life. So what you don't do, because you always want to be able to go home, figuratively speaking, meaning to the neighborhood, etc., you don't want to alienate them. So taking a picture with them or being seen with them or not ostracizing them in that flagrant kind of manner that would be interpreted as disrespect in their right. eyes is something you guard against. So when we look at young dudes yep. that are in the NFL and they have a quote-unquote affiliation or an association, some people in other communities need to understand that don't mean you hanging with them. That doesn't mean you do what they do. It just means that you're showing them a level of respect deference and dare I say love because they am with they helped you get to where you are. Okay. That's what's being held against the Sean Jackson, at least to some degree. Yeah. And that's part of the problem.